Hi there, everyone. It's me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're going to get back to the regularly scheduled programming because um, the commentary on the internet bullshittery is not kind of normally where I want to go with my channel, but occasionally when someone says stupid things on the internets, I'm going to say something. So first off, let me just recognize one thing. Um, the last video I did, which was a rant, it's got 250 some views. I'm going to be honest, my channel's about having had a stroke, stroke recovery, brain injury, brain injury recovery, mental health, mental health recovery. Um, I might do the odd video about religious beliefs and, and how they can impact mental health. I might do the odd video about discrimination or what is not actually discrimination um, and, and, and things of that nature because they're relevant to my world. Uh, in some way, shape, kind, or form, uh, and I'm going to make a video about those. So, for those of you that have never watched my content before, my channel is generally about my stroke and my stroke recovery. So, we're going to get back to the regularly scheduled program. So, this is 14 months after a stroke. Yesterday, the 21st, would have been the 14-month anniversary since my brain tried to kill me. Unsuccessful. So, Let's just talk about 14 months after a stroke. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a neurologist, I'm not licensed or certified in any way, except for the fact that my brain tried to kill me. Uh, I used to work in mental health, I actually did at one point work with brain injury clients in, in their recovery, rehabilitation, and reintegration, um, but I'm not currently licensed or a member of any college or professional body in, in like an official capacity. So let's just talk about 14 months after a stroke. So I had my stroke on the 21st of June, 2018. Um, I'm going to be honest. Between June and November was difficult, extremely difficult. Um, and then November into December, I was getting ready to go back to work. December 31st, I went back to work, um, and then on July 8th, I entered into another leave of absence. Uh, for reasons related to my stroke, but not because of the stroke itself. So right now I'm currently on a leave of absence, um, waiting to see when I'm considered fit to work. Right now I'm considered completely disabled. Um, I'm actually going to do a video about what disabled means, but right now I'm completely disabled, so to speak. Um, at least for the purposes of the medical notes, I'm disabled. So you learn a lot after having had a stroke or a brain injury or any major, major life-changing medical event, be it a heart attack, be it, you know, God forbid you get cancer, um, because I've seen how difficult that can be. Um, so there are some definitive things that change in your world. There are definitive things that change about you and how you interact with your world. There are some definitive things that change about how your world chooses to interact with you. So, and, and I'm just going to use my experience. And so one you lose a sense of self-confidence because I can remember a thing that I could be, I could do a, a month ago, a week ago, a year ago. <clears throat> and now I I'm either have extreme difficulty doing that thing, um, or I probably can't do that thing, or I probably shouldn't do that thing. Cause it could be a definitive bad life choice. And I'd end up in bed for a day. Um, so you end up, you end up with a loss of self-confidence at times which can relate to a loss of self-worth. So that can get into a spinny kind of cycle, which can lead to post-stroke anxiety, post-stroke depression, and can, can cause you some, some, some significant um, difficulties, cause you some significant uh, complications. And because you end up having to find your, your new normal, uh, you end up having to find your new situational normal. 
Because there are days where I can just stumble through the world all fat, dumb, and happy and have limited difficulties. And there are other days where doing the exact same thing is impossible. Well, not exactly impossible, but pretty close to. Um, there are days whereby I overestimate my own ability to do a task or sometimes, luckily, I underestimate my ability to do a task. In the initial days after my stroke, it was it was difficult because shopping I couldn't do unsupervised. I needed a chaperone to help me. Cooking, I, I ate a lot. Little restaurants here and there, ordered pizza. Um, a lot of toast because, you know, I couldn't set my house on fire with toast. Um, and I don't really have to worry about grabbing a shirt knife to cut it. So you lose some of your self-worth, some of your self-confidence because a portion of you that day I don't want to use the word died although that's the most accurate description transformed, transformed a portion of you that day was transformed um, and it's not like Autobots, Decepticons kind of deal, um, because that'd be really cool, but luckily that's not how that happens. And for those of you watching in the background, you're now seeing Crash the Wonderbird crawl up my shoulder. He's probably going to attack my ear soon, or he's going to look for a hair to pluck. And he's chosen the, and up, oh, and he's going, pluck, nope, not. And it's an end, the plucking of hair has begun. So, a portion of you is transformed that day. Uh portion of you has been transformed and some of it you recognize in the mirror and some of it you don't some of it takes some significant difficulty to come to terms with about how that transformation has sort of left you so there are days where you might not recognize yourself in the mirror and there are days where recognizing yourself in the mirror is a shock And that can place a strain on relationships. And I've done a few videos on um, caregiver, spouse, partner, support. I'm going to do some more on those as well. So there are other things that change. Like your relationships with people change. Um, you are going to find people that you thought were you were pretty tight with. Um, they just fuck off. They just pick up and fuck off at the high port. Like, and they just, poof, gone. It's almost like a roadrunner gone, like just a little cloud of smoke and poof, gone. Um, and they just fuck off. Um, for whatever reason, they do it. Um, you're going to have people that truly don't understand your world. Um, and they mean well, but they're morons. I know, sorry, I can't say they're morons because that's actually technically a medical definition. Um, I'm going to say they're idiots. Mm. Incompetent? Emotionally incompetent. Yes, they're emotionally incompetent because they don't know how to deal with your situation. So they they um, they they just don't they don't get it, right? They and and they never will. That, that's the sad thing. Uh, so then you're going to have people that want to talk to you like you're a six year old. Um, then you're going to have people that you tell them exactly what you need and they ignore you. And then you tell them again what you need and they ignore you. And then you tell them again what you need and then they tell you you're being overdramatic and you don't really need that thing. I know better than you do. And then you find those few gems. Some of them are people you already knew. Some of them are people you barely knew. And they stand out and they stand up and they actually take the time to be part of your world in a constructive uh, contributory fashion that is authentic so i've learned a lot in the last 14 months i've learned a lot about myself in the last 14 months Learned a lot about this little guy, Crash the Wonderbird, 
in the last 14 months. You know, uh, belongs to my girlfriend, and he's kind of my therapy animal. Not really a therapy animal. Um, hashtag not my therapy animal. <clears throat> but he and I have hung out for many days, and we end up. Nope, there we go. We end up just hanging out. Uh, there's been there have been times in the past 14 months that have been truly scary. And I'm not just talking about the stroke. I've been, a couple times I've ended up in a merge with a headache or some symptoms that look significant. Um, there are, there have been some significant mental health issues at times sort of show up. Uh, so there's not much I can do to prevent the mental health issues when they show up, so to speak, but I can, I can just be realistic about them and, and try to be, um, effective when I have to deal with them. Right? And that's, that's really all I can do. But, and if you made it this far in a video, biggest thing I've learned about myself after a stroke in 14 months is there are going to be bad days. They're, they're, they're just, a, the reality is there's going to be bad days. There are going to be difficult days. There are going to be a few horrendous days. But ultimately, for every bad day I've had, for every difficult day I've had, and for every horrendous day I've had, there have been great days. There have been amazing days. Uh, there have been days that have been almost effortless. There have been days that have been so close to my normal before the stroke, it's almost like it didn't happen. And and trust me, if I could wave some little magic wand um, and and make the stroke have not occurred, in some ways I don't think I would take that chance. Because I, I, I would love to be back where I was before the stroke. But you learn things. You learn things about yourself. You learn things about people. You learn things about the people around you. You learn a lot about things you may have taken for granted before and, and things that you're not willing to take for granted any longer. You learn things about what you value and how you value them. So ultimately, overall, this hasn't been an atrocious thing. And you're like, how can you say that? Well, I use my lips. <laughs> um, how can I say that? Because there are things I have today that if it wasn't for the stroke, I probably wouldn't have. There are relationships I have today that if I hadn't had the stroke, I know I wouldn't have. There are things I've learned about other people, be they good, be they bad. Um, if I hadn't had the stroke, I would have never learned. And some of that would have been to my own detriment. And ultimately, if I hadn't had the stroke, I wouldn't have had the world's best unlicensed aviation hair removal technician. And that just happened there. Yes, he's an unlicensed bird esthetician. He won't wax your junk, so don't worry about that. He uh, likes to pluck hairs. So, ultimately, this hasn't been a completely wretched experience. I've had days where I've had no other choice but to be brave. I've had days where I've had no other choice but to fake courageous. There have been days where I've been scared to my core. But you know what? Every one of those days, I learned something about myself. Every one of those days, I got through the day, sometimes with a lot of help, sometimes a little bit of help. Um, and ultimately, I'm here. I prove, in, in, in some limited instance, that a recovery after stroke is possible. Where am I in my recovery? I don't know. 
Right now, I'm going to say I'm in the 25% that will have a recovery that's very close to their pre-stroke existence. I'm not right now, as far as I'm concerned, part of the 10% that's made the full recovery. I don't believe that can actually be a thing anyways. Well, neither do you. That's good to hear. So on that note, <clears throat> I'm going to sign off now. Um, I'm going to be working on a few more videos on caregiver support after a stroke. And if you happen to be enjoying the channel, or you're recently stumbled on my channel because of the recent video I've done on Miss Yanev, please like, subscribe, share the content. If you know someone that's personally right now going through the throes of a stroke, and the stroke recovery and rehabilitation and reintegration, and the redevelopment of their skills, please subscribe if you're the stroke survivor yourself. Or, or point the channel out to the stroke survivor. If you know someone that is going through and helping someone, be it a spouse, a partner, a caregiver, a family member, a friend, that's supporting someone, be that you yourself or someone you know of, that's supporting someone that's going through the throes of a stroke recovery, please like, subscribe, point the channel out to them. You will definitely get some value out of the content I generate. If there's something you would like to see me generate specifically, please leave a comment down below. You can find me on Twitter. The Twitter handle's in the description down below. You can reach me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Again, that's in the description down below. Uh, and if if your content suggestion is sort of in my wheelhouse, I'll definitely make a video about it. And I will let the world know, if you wish me to, that you were the reason why the video was made. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, uh, confused, has lost your sense of balance, someone has... Vision problems, they see at a one eye only, they see at a grayscale, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see a little dot in the world. Someone has facial droop, there's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who has the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone has um, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, can't smile equally uh, effectively or at all. Someone who has a general body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.